what's new. The recipe here hasn't changed much over the previous 15, which is a rare sight on our roads. It's still got a boxer motor feeding not much torque through a stepped CVT permanently to all four wheels. This time around you've got a choice of 1.6 or 2.0 petrols to choose from and no diesel in sight. Naturally we're trying the more powerful version on our unusual Latvian test drive. The styling has been altered too, with a sleeker grille, more modern LED headlights and silver accents to highlight the car's off-road sensibilities. In fact, while it might look more revolution than revolution, this is a completely new car from the ground up to make use of the new platform. It's fractionally wider and longer than the old 15 with a bigger boot. But is this Subaru 15 better to drive than the previous version? Oh yes! Miles better! And we can say that unequivocally because we tested them both back to back, at speed, on a snowy go-car track without traction control. It's a tough job, etc. The biggest difference is in the handling, and that's down to the new platform. Body roll has been mitigated impressively thanks to a new stabilizer bar at the rear, which connects directly to the body instead of the subframe as before, thus eradicating most of the excess movement. Its steering has been improved too, especially on initial turn-in, due to a far more rigid body structure and a retune of the electrically assisted system software. There's still no real feedback in the traditional sense, but it's sharp and accurate enough to be enjoyable on a set of icy chicanes. Another major improvement we noticed during our messing around. Er, sorry. Professional evaluation on the car track was the power delivery, or more precisely, the gearbox's response. In our quest for a bit of sideways action, old school Scooby style, a long right-hander showed a stark difference in drivetrain performance between old and new XVs. The former didn't serve up nearly enough or curly enough to trouble the symmetrical all-wheel drive system when we wanted to, whereas the latter offered poke almost immediately, with the associated corrective action required. The result? Sideways on snow, and balanced, neutral sliding otherwise. It's not tail-happy in any way but feel solid and manageable. Some rival cars with hall decks have a tendency to push their noses into corners with more gusto than Tony Montana and piles of Columbia's finest. Not here. What's that engine like? It's only when you try to push the throttle pedal through the bulkhead that you're subjected to the droning racket our very own Anthony French Constant describes as bovine in its oral pleasures, but at least there's more meaningful accelerative progress available than before. That said, the 2.0-liter we're driving here is incredibly smooth and quiet for a boxer. It's not exactly what you'd call quick though, as the 10 seconds plus amble to 62 miles per hour tests. Don't bother with the 1.6 unless you don't do motorways, because the fuss it makes to hit 70 miles per hour really does beggar belief. Purists might actually miss the lack of classic Subaru warble here as we did when a WRX SDI drove past, but alas it's been ironed out in the name of refinement with extra engine mounts and a more rigid block. And a good job has been done in honing the 15th's manners. Not only is the cabin nicely hushed at speed but the ride quality is excellent. The chassis team have done a great job, so while it's a fraction firm, Every single jolt is absorbed and addressed individually by the passive dampers, so you lose the jiggling sensation all too many adaptive setups exhibit. We'd pick this over air springs and their incessant choppiness any day.